Hello everybody, Nikki from Gracie's house. On this lovely, lovely sunny afternoon, the birds are tweeting and I'm just gonna hang here and wait. I can see somebody has joined on Instagram. So hi guys, and I can see someone's found me on Facebook as well. I'm gonna chuck my head in. This is about all you're gonna see of me today. Hi, <laughs> Patricia, hello my lovely. So, um, as I said, it's beautiful, it's springy, we've got birds, we've got blue sky, I have sun. It's lovely, it's warm, it's awesome. Hi guys, all of you on um, Instagram, loads of people dropping in and saying hello. Alison and Patricia over on Facebook. We're gonna be working with one of the new ones. I'm gonna show Instagram first. So this is Orange Grove, and there you go, on Facebook as well. Bev, hello, I think I've just seen Francie pop up. Good, good. So I have this lovely um, kind of farmhouse buffet. So for, for me, it's a dresser base. But obviously a dresser for you guys, most of you guys, is a chest of drawers for me. I have to be very, hi Amber. I have to keep an eye on all um, descriptions of things and pieces because we call them different things. So I have this buffet, buffet, buffet. <laughs> We're gonna use Orange Grove. So this is kind of a, a format that's worked for me before. You just saw this transfer and say, so it's beautiful. Patricia, it's a little bit, um, it's kind of reminiscent of Blossom Flight, I think. Um, yeah, very, very popular, but cute. Really, really cute. So, but you can see there's all these panels, can't you? I've done these before. This is kind of a tried and tested formula for me. Um, so I've done a pink one with, what did I put on it with the cranes, Elegance and Flowers, and I've done a green one, which I think was Blossom Flight. So I kind of know that this works and I, I kind of know what I'm doing now, but each one's a little bit different. I've not done a, a buffet that's got these um, quirky little hinges on. So for the minute, I've cut myself a nice square out and I'm gonna try and make this as manageable as possible. And that is the main thing. There is so many edges and corners on this, it would be impossible to, to try and fit it round each one. So the thing that I tend to do, I've got a nice sharp, I've got a new blade in my craft knife. These are also available with Redesign with Prima Retailers. Um, and yeah, I just got a pack of new blades, so I've got some a new nice sharp blade. And the way that this works for me is that we cut the inset and stick that down. So you're kind of sitting it as, an, as a 3D, you're not going around all of these curves because not only have we got inset panels, but we've got these grooves as well. It would just be so much. Hi Donna, is that to me? I think that might've been to someone else actually. And the grid lines that we have printed on the top sheets are gonna really, really help me on this project as well. So sorry if I'm not saying hello to anybody, you guys. I'm trying to crane my neck to see. Um, so if I miss anything, Rosie's there. She's always there helping. Um, so she can answer anything if I miss it and I will catch up. Um, these grid lines are very, very helpful in certain projects and this one's really gonna help me. So I'm gonna use this grid line here to line up with the groove that we've got along the side of my dresser slash buffet. And I've got this one along the bottom. Can you just about see that? Um, that is going to sit just along the groove that is on the bottom trim. You see, I've got this groove here, so I'm going to add that there too. I'm going to I'm going to use that to line up. So I'm just going to take these small pieces. I did a little bit of chopping before, and I might have got a bit carried away. So we've got some bits to fill in. Um, so I'm just going to. Do you know what I think I'm going to do first? I'm just going to peel a little bit back. Because we've got all these panels to work with, what I don't want to do is um, get them sort of sticking anywhere. So I'm lining it up with the middle of that groove, that trim here, and then I'm lining it up with the bottom of the groove there. So I'm just gonna press that down a little. Now peel that back a little bit more so we're dealing with that whole inset panel there. Because what I want to do, like I said, I'm not gonna be able to wrap all of this around all these different edges and keep on going. It was just, it would just be too difficult. So I'm gonna take my craft knife, I'm gonna use the edges of my door panel. Try not to get my head in the way of the camera. 
Because what I want to do is use that edge to cut my transfer. I'm going to use that edge and go down to there until it stops. Um, I'm going to do the same going in both ways here. Try and keep your knife straight because what you don't want to do is start digging into your paintwork. Of course you can touch it up afterwards, but ideally we don't want to have to do that. Oh, look at that. A leaf just stuck to my... Let's just see if we can save that. Might not be able to. No, I think that's, that's done. Luckily, it's one of the outline leaves, so I'm not too concerned about that. Okay, so you see I've got myself a little panel. I'm going to just push that down to sit into that recess. And we have our first section. So we can, we can get on and transfer that piece over without worrying about disturbing all of the other bits. And we've just got a manageable piece to work with. And you know what? I can't even tell where that leaf came from. So that's not too bad. A little casualty that we can live with. So I'm going to start lifting my transfer. I'm just going to try and have a little look around that corner. Make sure that I'm pushed right into that edge. And there we go. Start lifting the top sheet. I think it's actually catching. Keep working over. And if you do happen to just lift the top sheet and it's not quite released, just drop it back down and keep going. I'm just going to make sure that I'm not missing any comments. No, I think we're good. And obviously because I'm in set, I'm really careful that I don't want to rub any of my paintwork. So you just have to be a little bit delicate along those edges while at the same time making sure the edges are all down nice and firm. into that corner or the, the recess there get that edge off that bit doesn't want to go there we go so there was a little bit there that just was a bit reluctant to release I just had to rub a little bit extra there we go so there's our first piece already done I'm going to use my polishing pad these if you haven't had um, if you haven't seen them or if you haven't used one yet I'd definitely recommend getting them really really good for getting those edges ru edges rubbed down the halos burnished really good um, the halos are less of a problem I think I've got a bit of a dirty pad there I've used this I need to get some clean ones uh, halos are less of a problem on a lighter base so um, this is going to be more of a friend kind of thing when you're working with darker colours but it just does a really really good job okay. so there we go so that's our first piece done so we can carry on working um, I'm now gonna get to working here but because I don't want to have to push this in I'm gonna cut down here as well um, let's just think about how I'm going to do that. I'm going to actually go either side of that so we might get a little bit on the on the raised section. Mm -hmm. 
Oops. So I'm just following because this has kind of got double grooves. It's a bit of a tricky one. There's lots of trims here. And lots of details, should I say? There we go. So we're just gonna, um, just as you would, kind of transfer into your grooves, into as many areas as you can, press down. All into these recesses, all into these little details. And then we've got some nice flat surfaces as well. Sometimes I decide to wrap around on this one. I've decided not to. But again, that's that's just down to the design and kind of what you're going for. This is quite a small piece, a narrow piece. So I've just kept it sort of tidy and stuck it all to the front. I'm just going to go down into that into that recess there and that's sitting nicely and the other thing is great the polishing pad's going to really get into those grooves as well for me okay so we have our next piece of trim here and this is how it's going to go we've got lots going on <laughs> Yeah, there's definitely a citrus. I couldn't see who commented that, but there's definitely a citrus trend happening, isn't there? So I'm going to cut along that line, which it doesn't want to go. There we go. So I'm going to cut right along there. Then I'm going to use the bottom of my door, because obviously we want to be able to open our piece, so I'm going to score along there as well. I'm going to be cutting down the other door edge there and here. So this is kind of patient work because we've got all these, all these things going on, all these bits that you have to think about. But it means that we can do all these little sections polishing pad make sure all of that's stuck down nicely they're great for kind of pressing out wrinkles if you've got any wrinkles they're just a really quite versatile tool even if you like to kind of buff your paint in between coats I've been using it to do that as well which has worked quite well for me too So we've got all these intricate little sections. What fun. <laughs> I've got, I'm just popped over. I've just had a little look up and I see someone say hi from Brazil on Instagram. my pad here to get into that those details there make sure that's all pressed down and then we've got a little a little bird's wing that's kind of tucking under the handle we've got a tree going on here there's all sorts going on So I've kept the bits that I cut out here because I could um, I can fit those in, but I wanted it to be a nice, easy kind of flat application. And of course you could apply this before you put your hardware on, but for this purpose, I needed it on its back to make it easier 
and the doors wouldn't stay, stay on properly if I didn't have it with the hardware on. So there's kind of method to what seemingly may look like madness on all the reasons that I've done what I've done. But it is on purpose. <laughs> so you can see it is fiddly work. If you're trying to do this kind of project, it is gonna take you a little bit longer than if you're not, you know, than if you're just working on a completely flat surface. It's just the way it is. So I'm just gonna cut some bits of top sheet off and out of the way so they're not rattling and making noise. And it just makes things, again, it's just all these little things that will help make things more manageable. And then of course, when I open my door up, there'll be a little bit of wrapping around as well. through that little groove there as well just so that we can push those push that orange in the bird's wing into those okay and because we're doing it like this it, you're not losing a great deal of pattern you can still see what's going on help if I pick the right tool up though every time you see a new one it becomes your new favorite uh Francie I'm kind of with you on that I'm very much like that that happens to me a lot. I think I've got my odd, like, you know, couple of real favourites. But, yeah. Or, and one that I might not have used ever will become, as soon as I use it, oh, love it. <laughs> and I think, why haven't I used it sooner? We're just doing these little, little kind of flowery bits there. I'm gonna keep cutting the the sheet off because then you can kind of see as it goes, as we go along. I've just seen a bit that I didn't that didn't slice through, so it's not sat down properly yet. There we go. We might have to do a couple of little touch ups here and there, maybe. I think I think so far so good. <clears throat> Just because I'm using the knife, um, but I, it does look like it's it's going to be okay. A little bit of folding around there and there. Okay, and let's just do this piece here. I love the punch of sort of the oranges in this. I think it's really, really sweet. Sorry again, guys, if I can't, if I'm not replying to anything, it's tough to crane my neck up and, oops, there we go. This is what I had to be careful with. I've just scratched a bit of my paint. It's fine, I can just use a little tiny touch up. But this is why you just have to be so careful doing these um, these kinds of projects but that's why we love paint isn't it because we can just touch that up okay 
So we're kind of moving on to the next bit. Let's just cut that section off. So we've got that out of the way as well. <clears throat> Lovely. It's so pretty. <laughs> Who You lean towards being bold and beautiful flat. I, yeah, I love all of the florals. I don't think there's any of the floral transfers that I don't like to be honest. So we're just gonna carry on in the same fashion. I'm just gonna run my knife through the folds, the creases, the grooves. I don't know what the best thing is to call them. There's another one there, I think. Just start about there. There's one along there as well. Yeah. Then we want to do our inset panel. I'm going to start here so I can see what I'm doing. And then go here and go back that way. Is it okay? So I'm finding it easier to kind of start somewhere in the middle rather than try and start in the corner. And then we can just press that in. Get that done. the top sheet kind of getting stuck on the not on the transfer the transfer's stuck but the, the actual top sheet keeps getting stuck on the uh, on the edges <laughs> where it's such a tight fit things changed the way that cross posting happens change so if anyone does happen to be watching this on the Gracie's house page and I can't see those comments so just to let you know I will catch up with them uh, later down the line later today hopefully so we did most of that didn't we before so I'm just going to do this groove and try not to scratch any paint at the same time which I think actually if I just press it down it may even be easier to just use my polishing cloth for those last bits yeah because it will just push it in without causing any issues perfect so if you've got that situation you don't want to cause any scratching or damage with whichever tool you're using so that's the stick that comes in each tube and um, that one you can buy separately. If you're just struggling to kind of not cause any damage there, then make sure your transfer is released and then push the rest into those grooves with your polishing pad. It works well. So we can just get going here. Another groove. We're just going to cut through these ones again. Whoops. Doesn't want to. There we go. I think I've, I put a 
new blade in, but I was using it on something else, and I think it's actually um, a bit bent on the end now. <laughs> Whatever I was doing with it earlier, it's bent. I need to put another new one on. And then we're going to continue cutting through where our door is. We get to the end there, we're going to do the same here and go that way as well. What am I doing? This is time consuming, guys. I'm sorry. I kind of knew it was going to be, but it's quite a... It's sort of quite an important lesson to learn or have a look at because it can be quite daunting. I remember the first one I did and, oh, it was just, I just, I didn't know where to start. I didn't know what the best, the best method was. And I'm not saying this is the best one. It's just the best one that worked for me. pushing that down there and then we'll get the polishing pad in to that groove Let's cut some of this extra sheet off. I think I just cut a bird's beak off. Let's take that back. I did. Let's just rub that back on. There we go. You don't want to lose the edge of the beak there, do you? scratch my paint again there but I can touch it up it's okay <laughs> okay so I'm just going to push that into my groove there Another, what am I, what have I got here? I've got a door, I've got a, more grooves. So many grooves. Oh, I can't, I can't see where my knife's gone now. It doesn't want to play games. keep getting to a point and then it does it just stops it just comes out it's not cutting properly I need to get a new knife right the great thing about these is if I can get the lid off the blades are stored in the handle so I'm just going to do a quick change because it's driving me mad but I love these knives for this go. Pop a new one in. Pop it back in there and then screw it on. Quick change. Okay, let's try again. Nice and sharp and yeah, that's better. <laughs> 
I obviously completely blunted my knife earlier, which was annoying. Bent the end of it, I think. That's what happened. I need to stand up, I think, just for that last piece. So I'm going to actually, I'm going to come around the other side quickly <clears throat> and cut my door. Now that I have my nice sharp knife, look at that. That's better, isn't it? So we're nearly done on this section. there's just going to be some wrapping on those edges which you can also do with you can just move it around with your fingers you could do it with the, the burnishing the polishing pad with the burnishing pad okay down into there so that I'm not going to have any problems with that lifting up. That's why it's really important that um, you get those edges down and you burnish everything. So it's not only for an aesthetic thing um, that you want, you want it to look nice and you don't want to see the halo, but if you've got those edges lifting up, then you've got more chance that the transfer will lift and peel when you top coat which we don't want. So that's our first piece. Oh gosh, that was mammoth. What do you think so far? It's cute though, hey? Um, I'm gonna fiddle with those. Actually, I'm gonna put that slice of orange in. I can get that done. Okay. Like I said, I got a bit overzealous and I trimmed off a bit too much orange. But there, you'd never know that I cut that slither off. And then I will probably at some point kind of cut some pieces off so that wraps in and around the, the hinge a little bit more. Um, I've got that piece of wing. Again, got a bit excited, cut a piece of wing off. Where's it gone? But I'm not sure if I can fit that in. So let us get to the next bit which is gonna fit here. So this transfer comes in three sheets. I'm gonna hold it there, cause you can all see it then. So there's three sheets to this one and they're almost the same. In fact, I think the top and the bottom one, no, they're not. They're really similar, but they fit together. You could use them in any order that you want. So some of the transfers, you, there's no order. Some of them, this one, you could actually mix and match and switch them around and it, it wouldn't matter just the way the pattern works. Um, but I did follow and I cut the piece that will go, it fits here. So that goes into that flower there. And that's how when the next bit, the next bit works. So let's go, let's get going. So it fits onto that flower there. There we go. Perfect. 
and I did cut round my hinge up here. Can you just about see that one? Let me just move that up a touch. There you go. There you go. Okie dokes. Tools are over there, knife is there. So let's get um, this little bit done here. So we're gonna do the same method using our inset as a guide. We're gonna cut that piece. So then we have our nice loose piece there and we can just tuck that into the corner. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Little bit of wing, no, it's tail. Little bit of tail there. through those sections there. Okay. And then we've got one, we've done that one, and then we've got one left here. <laughs> and then we've got our panel here too. straight. We'll cut that off and do that again. I think we might get away with that one. Yeah. We can get away with that one. going to grab a piece of top sheet just a small bit just to go on that edge of that flower because I've already trimmed a piece off round there that um so my adhesive is right up against the edge of the print Right, let's just get to rubbing the rest on. So, you know, you've just got to be mindful that you've got, we've got grooves all over the place. And, you know, you just need to kind of make sure that you're getting as much contact as possible, but use that polishing pad if you need to, to just push down into those grooves where you need to. Mm. 
So I'm just going to cut that little extra piece off so that it's just we're getting stuff out of our way as we go along as we did before. an eye on all my little feathers and things that I need to make sure are sticking down. And our feathered friends. What do we think these are? Are they kingfishers or are they hummingbirds? I think they might be, oh, I think they're hummingbirds, probably. Um, so I'm just going to use my pad in there. Yes, and yes, I think it's hummingbirds. And yeah, I've got loads of birds in the background. They have been very happy today. We've got, we've really got like proper spring weather this week. It's really lovely. What's going on over here? Nearly lost a bit of a bit of bird there. We've just about got away with it. Yes, we have. And that's why I was saying it's so difficult to keep an eye on all the different angles that I've got going on. over the with the top sheet it doesn't matter so that's our door cut through as well okay I think what are we doing how are we doing not too bad I, I, all I can see is someone's put hibernate in the house but I didn't see what the rest of the comment was so um let's just see if I can sort of work some bits around here for the last few minutes so I'm gonna just get as close to the hinge now as I can. I've kept this bit as well, so I could do the same. So this is gonna be like really, really small patchwork. Like I said, if um, there's a possibility that you'd be able to do it before the hinges went on, but because I know that this is gonna be much easier with it laid down, the hinges had to be on for the, for the doors to stay in the right place. So it's kind of a toss up between, this would have been really difficult if it was stood up on its, um, stood up on its legs like normal. Okay. So then we've got that little bit there. And the great thing is because we can just sort of patchwork it, we don't have to do it all in one go. And just keep doing small pieces. Yeah. 
tricky though. doggies come in. It's that time of the day where she comes to tell me she'd like some food. You think it looks good even without patching? Do you know what? I actually don't, I don't mind. Um, I agree. I, I would be quite happy to just sort of leave it as it is. I think it would look okay. I just think this will kind of just make it look a little bit more finished. Just a touch. But you could, I mean, literally, you could go on like this for ever and ever and ever <laughs> couldn't you there we go so you see you get the idea you can just keep adding little bits you're not going to have a seam because you're not at the edge of, of like a um you know when there was a join but there's um the joins have been much improved on this release so that's something cool to look forward to as well if you haven't had any of the transfers from this release. Um, particularly on the Antherium transfer, that's, they've done the join really cool on that one. And it just go over, keep looking, keep looking, making sure you've got no bits that you need to just burnish down. I shall be doing this for ages because there's so, <laughs> there's so many grooves and things but I think you get the idea I'm not going to bore you with watching me cut those tiny little pieces out um but yeah that's you get the idea I've got another section that's going to go on up here in this corner if you can see that there um sorry B clouds up on Instagram this is called orange grove just to answer a few questions now that I'm actually looking at the screens um so it's one from the latest release it's been out uh, I don't know two or three weeks so just just the latest one um anything that i've missed on facebook i will come back and reply to instagram if i haven't answered anything if you wait till it goes up onto igtv and then post again because comments and things don't transfer over once the live has finished but thank you very much for joining me and if you guys could let me know in the comments so i'm at the normal time but because you guys in the us have had a change of time it's now 12 o'clock instead of 11 o'clock for you. Do you prefer the 12 o'clock slot? Would you like me to shift and change for good? Or are you quite happy with the 11 o'clock? So I'd love to, you to let me know um, what you think of that. If you're watching on replay, drop me a hashtag replay in the comments as well. And I'll catch you next week. Thanks for joining me, guys. Bye.